In the grand history of cinema, there are hundreds of villain origin stories. Magneto, the Penguin, Norman Bates, the creators of X-Men Origins Wolverine. My villain origin story is watching this film. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, this is D Movie Man, fellow cinephile, popcorn addict, and emerging film critic, coming to you with reliable recaps, reviews, and reactions. And today, I'm coming to you all with a review for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, directed by Sam Raimi and starring Benedict Cumberbatch, Elizabeth Olsen, and Sochio Gomez. Story-wise, this is pretty straightforward. There's Doctor Strange, there's a multiverse, and there's madness. Or so we're led to believe. So before I get into my thoughts, I would like to shout out my amigos at The Real For Real Podcast, Sean from Lost in the Real, Mike from Did You See That, and Jamie from In the Front Row. I have to be honest, lately the YouTube work-life, personal life balance has been quite shaky <laughs> and I've kind of been on the struggle bus to say the least. Which is why this review is late, 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 late. But <laughs> I do get somewhat self-conscious about being late with certain reviews and films being released and feeling like I'm behind and after a certain point it's like, okay, who cares? Everyone's moved on. So I honestly wasn't planning on doing this. I was going to take the L <laughs> and just move on. But then all of these really awesome content creators that I just mentioned, they all encouraged me, gave me positive feedback. They were like, no, it's not too late. We want to hear what you have to say. Just go for it. So shout out to you guys. Thank you so, so much. And for everyone else watching, please feel free to check them out in the description box below. And let's get into the review. So I'm going to start with the pros. Yes, I have positive things to say. So for starters, I remember when the Multiverse of Madness title was first announced. I also remember the announcement that Elizabeth Olsen was going to be starring in this film as Scarlet Witch. I was seriously, and I do mean seriously, hoping we were going to get some kind of horror spin here, something creepy and sinister. I was hoping we were going to really play into that. I needed it, and I needed it badly. And I got it. <laughs> Sam Raimi is known for his work in both the superhero genre and the horror genre, with both the Evil Dead series and the early 2000s Spider-Man trilogy which I have to say are both very impactful and important films in their respective genres. To an extent, I thought Sam Raimi's direction really brought something new to the MCU that we haven't seen before. I thought it was a really nice change of pace and I really hope that this is not the last time we see this genre referenced or utilized because I was totally here for it. And yes, I'm looking at you, Blade. The casting overall is pretty solid but let's be honest here. This is Elizabeth Olsen's film. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it is. Scarlet Witch has always been a very intriguing character to me, even in the comics, and especially her dynamic with Quicksilver and Magneto. So seeing her in that first post credit scene in Captain America, The Winter Soldier, all the way to WandaVision, it's been a journey to say the least. If I really had to think about an actor in the MCU who has been able to really dig into the emotional core of their character and take it beyond just a superhero and their powers, it's Elizabeth Olsen. I'm not knocking anybody else, but she's on another level. <laughs> just got to admit it. If I'm really being honest, this could have been called Scarlet Witch and the Multiverse of Madness. <laughs> just like, come on. I mean, Doctor Strange. Who's that? I hate to say it. I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. Lastly, we get some really fun cameos here. Now, some were expected and some were unexpected. 
But either way, they were a really nice surprise. It was really fun seeing that and I really enjoyed that. All right, now I'm going to jump over to the cons. <sighs> Ooh, figured I'd stretch <laughs> because I have a lot to say. So you know how sometimes I'll preface what I have to say negatively about a film by saying something positive or witty or somewhat aloof and then just kind of ease into the cons? Yeah, I'm not doing that. This film is sloppy, disjointed, underwhelming, frustrating. For me, this film is a disappointment Period. Whew. Man, the truth is so freeing. <laughs> but let's go ahead and dive into why I feel this way. First, let me preface this by saying that apparently this film underwent significant and extensive rewrites and reshooting. And I have a feeling that that is mainly responsible for all the issues that I have with it. So first things first. The CGI and the green screen in this film is horrendous. If I've said it once, then I've said it a thousand times that I am not a huge proponent of CGI. But I have also said that plenty of times I can go with the flow and it doesn't have to be like the best CGI ever. I can usually just have a fun time anyway. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that was not the case in this film. Now, I think if this was attached to a company or to a studio with a whole lot less money, I might be fine with this. But given what studio and company it is and how much money is available, this wasn't just bad. It was disrespectfully bad. Now, it's not nearly as bad as Morbius, but that's besides the point. Up next, we have what is probably my biggest issue with this film and really stood out to me immediately. The writing for this film. Oh, it's abysmal. There is no getting around it. The dialogue was a complete joke. There were a few moments where it did actually work, but then we had lines like, there might be another, other, other me. I know a big part of this is just the writer and me, but I have also said plenty of times that bad writing is a no-go for me. Everything was either a goofy one-liner or some kind of cheesy quip. And worse, honestly, almost none of it was funny. It felt like I was trapped watching a really disastrous stand-up routine. Hey, hey there. I don't know about you, but when I listen to music, I prefer songs that have multiverses. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Please understand that I mean no disrespect to Michael Waldron, who was our screenwriter here, but I don't think that he was the best choice for this film. I know that he's written for Rick and Morty and Low Key and Heels, and maybe his writing works better in those projects. But here, it was a complete bust. That leads me to my next point, which is that the tone of this film was totally off. I really felt like this didn't take itself nearly as seriously as it needed to. I've always been fair about Marvel and how their lighthearted, quirky, humorous, colorful aesthetic can often work for them for many of their films. But we also have times where it is complete overkill or it's just shoehorned in unnecessarily. I do understand that this is Sam Raimi's lane as far as camp and horror, but the camp needed to go. A little quirky humor is fine here and there, but I wanted the stakes. I wanted to feel the tension and the dread, and I didn't get nearly enough of that. I also thought the characterization was incredibly weak. Kudos to Social Gomez. I did feel like she was bringing her all here. I did feel like she was doing her best to really bring America Chavez to life, despite the character being intentionally whitewashed. <laughs> but my biggest problem with America is that she's not an actual character. She is merely a plot device for the story and the other characters 
to move forward. Are her powers intriguing? Yes. Is she interesting? In theory, yes. But is her potential totally and completely wasted in this film? Absolutely. Then there's Wanda. I must say, WandaVision was such a pleasant surprise and an unexpected one at that. It actually ended up on my favorite television series of 2021. It even made my top five and uh, it wasn't number five or number four. So if you're interested in seeing where it fell, please feel free to check that out. I thought that there was so much depth and nuance and emotion presented with the story and the characters and the dialogue. It genuinely touched me and I thought it was such an impactful series, especially with the way that it develops Wanda as a character. Now, I understood what Wanda's progression in this film might be, especially considering the post credit scene in the WandaVision finale. However, I thought it was sadly mishandled. All that nuance and all that depth went out the window, save for a few scenes. What's really interesting to me is that people keep referencing that post credit sequence and they are using it to basically explain the progression of Wanda in this film. Like, I mean, what were you expecting? I mean, it shouldn't have been a surprise. Uh, you should have seen it coming. I actually agree with that. Her story arc here is not surprising. But what is surprising and disappointing is how it happens. Because there is zero connective tissue between that post credit scene and Wanda's big reveal at the beginning of this film. Mind you, connective tissue doesn't mean we're going down the same road with Wanda again. We don't need to repeat story beats from WandaVision. But can we not even get five minutes, just five minutes, to show the depth of what she's experiencing, kind of the emotional confusion and everything that's being caused by a particular object? We're just going to skip past all that and then just jump into the story arc. I'm pretty sure most of you have seen this at this point, so I'll just go ahead and say it. Wanda's villain arc, which also felt to me very mustache twirling, fire breathing, and one dimensional. I mean, I was half expecting her to rub her hands together and cackle. <laughs> Some may disagree, but for me, it felt like it all but undermined her journey in WandaVision. Not because of where she ends up here, because again, I completely understand that, but because all of the depth and exploration of that character is non-existent here. Elizabeth Olsen does do her best with the material, and ultimately, Wanda is still the best part of this film by far. But in the end, I was really disappointed to see how all the dimension of that character got completely flattened. And lastly, despite the title, this is not the multiverse of madness. This isn't even a multiverse. This is more of a trioverse, a miniverse, if you will. The miniverse of maintenance, the miniverse of management, the miniverse of monotony. Listen, the montage we get here is cool. Some of the dynamics in the few worlds we see, it's really interesting, but ultimately, where are we really pushing the boundaries and the limitations of what the multiverse would look like? If I'm being honest, I feel like we saw more multiverse in the first Doctor Strange film when the Ancient One was showing Steven, the astral plane, and the other dimensions. Now, what makes this even worse and I normally don't draw these kind of comparisons, but there's no getting around it. Everything, everywhere, all at once was just released 42 days ago. Now, regardless of how you might have felt about that film, and even if you didn't like it, you cannot deny that this film is the definition of chaos and mayhem and yeah, even madness. You cannot make a film called Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, then make a film called Multiverse of Madness and play it safe. <sighs> There's no madness here, only mediocrity. Damn! So I'm going to give Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness a C minus. 
Once again, I must say that I really do appreciate the many ways in which this film does stray from what we typically see regarding Marvel films. But I also think that just as much as it strays away from that formula, it also sticks to it a lot. It's like we're positioning this as a really unconventional film and there's potential for it to be, but it sticks to convention in so many ways. I just feel like why not push the boundaries? Why not raise the standard? I know that might seem like an unrealistic expectation, but we have had 27, count them, 27 of these films, with this one being the 28th. So yes, I feel that at this point, expectations should be a lot higher. And I think that the makers of these films, or even just the head honchos at Marvel, really need to consider what their game plan is going to be going forward and really consider all the ways that they can subvert the expectations of this audience. Did I have fun with this film in spite of the flaws? Yes, I can appreciate flaws. I've even said that I can really sometimes <laughs> appreciate a film that commits to being bad and I can even enjoy that. But I have way less grace for a film that has all the potential in the world and squanders it. It literally drives me up a wall. You might even say that it drives me mad. <laughs> Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is currently playing in theaters. You guys are free to check it out, leave your thoughts below, and let me know what you think. So, once again, this is D Movie Man, signing off, and I'll see you with the movie. Thank you.